Badger fans, what's going on? Let's talk happy things. Let's talk football recruiting. Let's talk blue chip ratios. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, really do appreciate it. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college. Terms and conditions do apply. Uh, Justin, let's let's just jump into this. So we are going to talk a little basketball at the end of the show. Today we we both watched the Rutger or yeah, the Rutgers game. The losses are melding together in my head. Uh, but we're going to start with blue chip recruiting ratio. So the 2024 class, Luke Fickle's first full official class, there were a couple late players, Kevin Haywood among others, bumped up and down in rankings. Um, the end result is Wisconsin has 11 blue chip, meaning either four or five star type of composite recruits out of 22 total enrollees. That's 50%. That's a blue chip ratio if you're talking composite recruiting ranking that Wisconsin has never hit, Justin, in the recruiting rankings era. They got kind of close in one of Chris's years, but this is Luke Fickle's first year. 50% of the guys coming in are four or five star guys. And that's without 247 having accurate rankings. Yeah, we've talked about it. <laughs> I'll I'll shot I'll take shots fired on that. I'll definitely throw them out there. Yeah, um I honestly think there's a couple of guys that are probably pretty close that should be. This I like this class a lot. I think it's the best class that in the almost 15 years I've been following Wisconsin recruiting that I've watched. And I think this is a huge talent infusion for fickle. I think that we would agree that the roster was struggling a little bit with athleticism coming into this. So this is, this is a big deal. They needed this. So, I mean, there's multiple positions that you look at that you're really happy with. And you and I kind of talked before we came in, really the only position that we don't love is wide receiver. And that's because I think we agree that there's, additional bodies we would have liked to have seen at that position. Um, but overall, yeah, it's it's an incredible class. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, too, and it's almost the timeline. So I thought I, I had faith that Luke Fickle with the, this new recruiting group would get us up to this you gonna, You're going to eat your crow on this one? I didn't think it would happen in year one. <laughs> I, I said, like, they're not going to they're not going to get there in year one. Um, I, I thought eventually – Right, because Luke Fickle has cachet and, and Max and Pat are like re real recruiting guys, like the infrastructure. Yeah. But I think the most impressive part of this is to get there right away, yeah. and it tells you, it shows you what they can do. Now they got to start winning, right? Right, because one of the things we talked about is, you know, year one, year two, you're selling the, the vision. Eventually, you got to start winning games. But I, I think it's incredibly impressive just to do this right away at Wisconsin, and I think that shows you what if they can keep building on it, like what's possible here. Yeah, I agree completely. And I think you're right in that regard. They do have to start showing it. But I think that we saw some signs at the end of last year of this team being able to compete in general. Um, we really struggled early last season with being able to create in the offensive side of the football. And that really hurt us most of the season. If we can get to the point where we can get to even upper 20s in scoring, this team is going to be very hard to beat, especially if the athleticism that they are infusing comes to play. I do expect the defense to be better this next year, just based athletically, they'll be more disruptive. Um, and you get this giant infusion added into it. It will hopefully help them, but yeah, you're, you're right. They have to be better and they have to prove it, or at least it needs to be flashy. Like if the results aren't quite there yet, you at least need to be able to see what they're trying to do. And that's kind of what we said about year one like offensively and stuff like that, we needed to show recruits, hey, this is what this offense is capable of. You, it didn't happen the way you wanted it to year one. You know, the bowl game was nice. Hopefully year two, you start to show some things. And maybe it's not every game. You might not have the consistency yet, but it, hopefully you have some games where you go out there and you drop a 40 bomb on somebody where mm -hmm. the plays just start rolling and you have some good games. And that gets you at least headed in that direction. Now, if everything comes together, maybe you get something to really sell. You know, I think we looked at this roster or the the schedule coming into it thinking that it was going to be an absolute juggernaut. And now I think it's it's dropped off a little bit. There's st it's still a very tough schedule. But some of the teams aren't what we thought they were going to be heading into this first year. Uh, there's more question marks, I would say, for yes. sure. 
yeah, I we we don't know what they are versus being a team that we we know is going to be yeah. and dominant. specifically like we're going to talk about schedule in a second because we're actually going to talk about the FanDuel over under for Wisconsin, but specifically to that point, like Alabama losing a Saban, for example, mm-hmm. like that that's a big deal. It um, and I'm especially with the amount of transfers, I'm still like, gonna they've gonna had a ton of them. I'm still going to pick Bama in that game. No, but, I, I I will too, but I, it makes your roster changing over as much as that one is at least takes makes it more of a guess. Like when you lose a bunch of starters off a team that's really good, now you have to hope that they come in there and you 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 actually legitimately have guys that are backing them up that are guys that are capable of being starters. If you have somebody that's just average versus a guy who's an NFL pick, that's a big drop off for a team like Bama. It's going to be interesting, man. Um mm-hmm. I want to go back to recruiting for a second and I want to talk about so we got the 11 quote unquote blue chip composite guys, right? Which again, People need to understand, like, that's that's a huge deal. That has never been done here, yep. having that ratio ever. It's – it's well, I shouldn't say ever because I, I guarantee you if recruiting rankings were accurate in a round when Alvarez was was pulling yeah. guys. He might have had a class or two. Uh, like, he had some real fair. dudes that he brought in. Yeah, yeah, I want to be fair to that. Recruiting rankings weren't then what they are now. What, what uh, are your thoughts on from a talent standpoint? I, I kind of had mentioned I thought that – Alvarez is like 98 or 99 teams might have had the most talent that we've ever seen. I yeah. mean, that's a, they had a team that led the country in defense. And I yeah. realized we've done that recently, but that was a team that led the country in defense and had the talent to back it up. Like you're talking Wendell Bryant's, you're talking, you know, some real defensive line dudes on that class where it's like, this is not what we have right now. And, and some corners too. Like you're talking about Fletcher. Yeah. Jamar talking- Fletcher, Eccles. Yeah, you're talking guys who Wendell Bryant was like the ninth pick in the draft. Mm-hmm. Are you top 15? I forget exactly where, yeah. but like one of first round pick. Yeah, like we haven't had a monster on the defense line. There were other guys on those defensive lines too. Those linebackers could hit. They had monster safeties. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, great running backs, offensive linemen. They, they, one of the, the underrated quarterback was the only position they were really missing. Well, I was gonna say one of the underrated things with some of those Alvarez teams and even some of the early kind of Bielema teams ish. Like there were some real dudes at receiver too. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there Chambers, Chambers, and Evans, and I mean, we've had uh, Alvarez. I guess the bigger point is Alvarez pulled talent for yeah. sure. Um, he could recruit but, for for sure, especially young Alvarez when he was hungry. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was pulling dudes. But for the recent recruiting rankings, his era, this has never happened at Wisconsin, and I don't know if people are making enough of how how much Luke Fickle and the staff showed in year yeah. one. Um, I think it's don't, really impressive. What they need to do is they need to realize, don't look at just the ranking of what the class is. I think that's underselling. And I actually think this class, I like this class more than what, what we're seeing from a ranking standpoint. Like I wouldn't be shocked if we look back at this and we're like, you know, you say normally it's a third, a third, a third. I wouldn't be shocked if we end up finding out like 50% of these guys end up being like, not only like contributors, but quality players on this team. They might not all be stars, but I wouldn't be shocked. There's a lot of athleticism that's coming in that we that Wisconsin's been quite frankly la- lacking the last yeah four or five years. You know what you're talking about? You're talking about a foundation class then, mm-hmm. like the, the class that lays the foundation for the fickle era. Yep. Is what you're talking about. Uh, last question here on recruiting because we're gonna have a fun segment coming up next. We're gonna put the schedule out. Fanduel release their over under. Justin and I are gonna go through it game by game, make our incredibly early to be revised yeah. pick. To be fair. Um, but we're going to have fun with that one. But uh, last question on recruiting of the, the three-star guys, who is the biggest snub that didn't get a final bump up for you? Like there's Corey, Lafayette, Booker, Conberry Johnson, Weber, Colin Coverly. I mean, you can keep going down that list. Like it's, I probably would say Ryan Corey. I, I think he's a four-star, but there you, you just mentioned three. I'm like Lafayette, I think is a four-star. I think Conberry Johnson, I think has an argument for it, but I understand why people don't quite have him there. Um, I look at it. Booker, I think by the time he leaves here, we'll look at it and say that guy should have been a four star. Yeah. But he's not as developed as some of the guys. Like the, the the physical development between him and say Stack is is pretty apparent. I think mm-hmm. Booker's coming in at like two twenty, and Stack's coming in at like two forty five. Oh, no, Stack's like, like two fifty five. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a part of the difference yeah. there. Is if he was two thirty five, two forty, then you're looking at him being like, this is a guy that's a gazelle yeah. with the weight already on to be ready to play day one. Listen, Steck is coming in like icebox out of Little Giants. Like that, <laughs> Steck is coming in ready. Um, yeah, Lafayette is my guy. Like he's the guy I look at as a composite three star guys. And like, I, I just see it on film. I see the athletic traits. I see what coaches have said that April wanted him, Leonard wanted him, Fickle wanted him. 
he just seems too easy to me that mm-hmm. he's going to end by the time he leaves. All right, we're going to take a quick break there. We're going to come back with our over under. But first, let's talk a little bit about LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is your number one source for all your hiring needs as a hiring manager. Um, it is the number one place for your company to go to find talent, to get new people, to save time, to save money. There is a reason small businesses continue to rate LinkedIn Jobs as the number one source as a hiring platform and the number one professional marketing platform in the world. It's because it's easy to use. They have the best people, simple tools, screening questions to get rid of people that have no business walking in your door and interviewing for your job. Listen, every hire is a high stakes wager. You got to make the right one. Screen out the fluff. And just get the good people in front of you, which saves their time. It saves your time. And saving time is saving money. That's why LinkedIn Jobs is the place to go. Right now, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, Justin. You need the oxygen tank there? You're, you're running out of breath. <laughs> that was the end. I thought I thought I was about done with the read. And then I had a few more sentences. I just powered through, right? Because, <laughs> listen, fourth quarter, put the four fingers up. I, I pushed through it. Um, let, let's talk about the over-under. So FanDuel sponsored the show, released uh, over-unders for the Big Ten for college football. Wisconsin comes in at 6.5, which is – I thought they would come in at 7.5, and, and I'm going to be perfectly yeah. on it. Um, I thought that was low. I it mean, is low. You have a year under your belt for Luke Fickle and them. They know what, what worked, what didn't work. I actually think that they showed some growth towards the end of the last season. Like our three best games of the year were probably the last three games we played. Huh? So I think you can look at it and be like, yeah, there's a chance this team make takes a step. I don't know how big of a step it's going to be, but I would be shocked if they regress and end up having a worse record this year, even though I do think the schedule is a little bit tougher. I think you're looking at it and you're like, yeah, but are they going to have five losses? Really? Like that would be surprising. Six losses. Like if they're at six and a half, they're saying that it's right between those two numbers. I could see seven wins. I don't think I can see six. Like if this team is competent this year and the defense is more athletic, the defense is going to going to struggle less with the third and longs that they were giving up all last season. Well, let's let's go through it then. Let's see what we actually think when we we lay out the schedule. Take a quick preliminary look, um, and I think what it is really quickly is uh, Vegas uh, people who set these lines are looking at Wisconsin's team last year as a team in this range, and then they're saying, "Well, next year's schedule is way harder than that." Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think it might be as simple as that. But uh, let's go through it. So the first game, South Dakota. Win. Yeah, we're both going win there. And if you hear me typing on the side, guys, it's because I just want to keep track so we don't have to use our memory. Um, next game you got – I'm sorry, I have it up here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We start with Western Michigan and then South Dakota. But I think either way – They're, they're both, they're both win. wins. Yeah, I agree. So we both and have – 2-0 right win. away. 2-0. Um, then we get the game, home game against Alabama. I'm going to loss. I'm going to say loss. Yeah. I feel better about it than I did coming into the se- – or at the start of the off season, but it's – I still don't think we have enough oomph yet for that one. Uh, no, I'm pretty confident early on saying that's probably a loss. Um, it's Listen, it, Alabama, you're right. I think everything you're saying about that Bama game is correct, that uh, it's better to get them early in a new coaching regime. That's going to be the that's gonna be that, that new group's first road test. Yeah. Um, it's still going to be a team with a lot more recruiting talent in the roster yeah it'll be interesting to see how many of the guys are ready to play like if they lost a lot of starting caliber guys are these guys going to be ready to play or are they going to still be a little raw because that that could be the difference in that game but we do, it's not like we have a wisconsin team coming into that one that's you know done it where they're they're com- like coming off a year of being highly productive and good yep. those were the years when we typically would have a game like this and we we probably have a good chance of winning it we were coming yep. off a ten and two year. I'd feel a lot better coming into that game. I agree. Um, so we're two and one. Then we have a bye week. A little early for a bye, um, but coming off the Bama game, maybe not the worst thing. Then we have going to USC after the bye. This one is a tough one for me because so much is wrapped up in whether or not the defensive hires they've made are actually a upgrade. Mm-hmm. It, I will say right now, if the defense is as bad as it was this last year. I think we win that game. Okay. If is they've gotten better, huh? Is that what you're going with as a win? Yeah. I, okay. I'm going if, if it's if because that's all I know right now. I'm going off the, the info I know, which is 
last year's defense stunk. And I think that our, we have a good enough coaching staff to exploit that and enough talent to exploit that. Um, and and they're take, they're regressing at quarterback. I don't care what yeah. he did in the bowl game against the quite honestly, probably a f- little overrated Louisville team. But yeah, I, I, I don't see that, them, that quarterback being that dominant. He's not Caleb Williams. He's not Caleb Williams. I will say Riley always gets good quarterback play. It's like, so I'm sure. I don't expect him to be bad. I just don't think you're looking at a top or first round NFL draft pick, which is a, it's a difference. Yeah. I'm going to say loss just because I do. I still think even if they don't get great quarterback play and you're right, it's not Caleb Williams. It's probably going to be better than Tyler Van Dyke. Probably. Well, and that's why I'm giving the caveat. If the defense is better at all for them, I think we lose that game. But if it's not, that's what I have to play off of. And that's all I know right now for information. So you're going to do an early W there, though. Obviously, I, I, I will but, right now until we yeah. – by that by week two, I might already be going, yeah, I wish I would like to have that one back, but we'll see. So you were at three and one. I am at two and two. Uh, then we come home, Purdue. I'm going to say that's a win for me. That's a win. Okay. Then we go on to the road. We got a couple roadies coming up. We got Rutgers first. I think that's a win. That's going to be a tougher game than we think, but I think it's going to be a win. I'm going to say a W there as well, but I, I don't feel like that's going to be like a 25. Like, I, I it's not a super easy game, no. in my opinion. He's got him playing well, mm-hmm. um, Shiano. Um, a lot will help if the the young running backs are starting to roll at this point. Like, we're getting to the point of the season where those guys might have their feet wet and might be starting to show some things, which would be a big deal for Wisconsin at this point. All right, then we go to Northwestern. I think we get revenge there. Okay, okay. After this last year. I think we come back and grab that one. Oh, How do you feel about that? You don't, you don't, doesn't seem like you want to go with that. I just hate that. I, I hate playing that. Ben Bryant's gone. He's, he's after, you know, you don't get an eighth year apparently. Listen, I mean, listen, you got to give credit to Northwestern for, for that bounce back year last year. Oh, um, I do. He, he did an amazing coaching job. And it was, it was nice to see them come together under him. Like, I would like to think it's a win, Justin. <laughs> like, I really would like to think that's a win, but I'm hesitant. Because of what we've seen, what we saw this year, because of what we saw from Northwestern, I'm going to chalk it up as a loss. I hate doing it, but I'm going to chalk it up. You're going to put us at that six number, aren't you? I can see where Vegas is getting there, right? When I go through this, I can see where a pessimist, if you look at this with a little bit of a pessimistic lens, I can see where you get to that that number. Um, All right, then we get Penn State at home. That's a loss. See, I'm going to take a win there. Really? Yeah, See, with, I, the, I, with the Kansas offensive coordinator, I really don't like. Like that's a game that I'm, I'm concerned with because having watched him, if if they let him do his job, we're going to struggle to defend them. There, mm-hmm. There's just so much eye candy with it. Unless our guys are really disciplined, they're going to gash us a little bit. See, I think Aller's actually a tick overrated. Um, that I will agree with. I just think that this offense is really user friendly. Yeah, and I think Eller's good. Like he takes care of the ball, but he's not the most accurate guy. He was at like fifty eight percent last year. I here's here's what I'm kind of basing this on is I do really like Fickle. I do really like the staff, and I don't think they're going to lose every tough game. So I got to find that's fair. And, and that would a, be a big win. Yeah, it's a home game, and I don't really love Franklin in a, in a tough coaching environment. I think he could, can get out. He's not a good game day coach. No, I'm going to go a W here, and uh, we're going to roll with it. So I am at right now one, two, three, four. I'm at five and three. Justin, you're at six so, and two. So Ryan can't see the 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 Northwestern win, but he can find a way to Penn State. Listen, um, playing at home is a big deal. Playing in Northwestern, like no no Badger fan should be surprised if we lose at Northwestern at this point. All right, and then we go to Iowa. Coming off Penn State at home, we go to Kinnick, Justin. You Do know what? This is a this is a TVD game for me, where I think if our passing game is is solid. I think this is, this game is a win for us. Okay. It may not be decisive, but I think we'll find a way to win it. Okay. I'm going to go loss in Kinnick until I can see us. How dare you? Sorry. <laughs> I sh- last year shook me. I'm not even. I, uh, that's fair. And then we have a buy. I feel like this is a pretty good time for a buy coming up Penn state, Iowa. Um, then we get Oregon coming on, coming that's in. All. I think it's a loss too. Okay. So Justin, I am at one, two, three, four, five, and four, and you are at six seven and three. And three or seven six and three. three. My six and three. Yeah, yeah. If it's nine games, then it's six and three. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, and then we have um, road game at Nebraska. I'm chalking that up as a W. Yeah, I'm gonna go W. And then 
then we finish it off home game Minnesota. That can't be right because we were six and three and we only had two more games. Did we miss one? Uh, I think that's right. Let me pull up the schedule quick. I'll, I'll double check. This is the beauty of uh, podcasting here. Um, let me double check. You might not have been six and three either. We might have miscounted that. Well, if I was seven and three, then you can't be five and four. <laughs> Listen, I can be whatever I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you forfeit the game, it's still a loss, right? <laughs> Let me see. I'm pulling up the FBS schedules right now. Make sure I didn't miss anybody, which is certainly possible. 2024. Okay. And I apologize to everybody, but I might have dorked this up for sure. So South Dakota, yeah, Western Michigan, South Dakota, Bama, USC, Purdue, Rutgers, Northwestern, Penn State, Iowa, Oregon, Nebraska, Minnesota. Yep, we got it all. Hmm. Okay, so what on Minnesota, let's finish there. We both had to win at Nebraska. I think that's a win. I think it's a win too. So let me tell you this. I think I, if, if I had my number right on this, I, I figured we'd be eight and four. Is is where I figured where you'd end up being. Um, so I have us at seven and five, Justin. You have us at two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have us at eight and four. No so we both have us covering it. Um, I'm I'm by a razor's edge. You're a little more confident in this one, but it's a fun exercise. It is. I think the my takeaway from this, and like I said, I don't feel strongly about some of it, but I do think the defense will be more athletic this next year. So if the mental side of the game is is on par, then the defense will be improved. And if the offense is – if we get better quarterback play at all, and, and that's not a slight to Mordecai. He was a gamer. He did a great job of maximizing what he could do, but things were not cohesive in that part of the game at all last year. And if that part – if we were closer to a, a competent system this next year, we'll score enough to win some of these games that we lost. And I think that we get a slight bump up. I'm not expecting a huge difference. Listen, if we find a way to win a game, a big game, it's going to be, that's going to be where they, this team makes a jump. You, you beat a Penn state mm-hmm. and suddenly you're nine and three. Yeah. So and Justin has us at eight and four. I have us at seven and five. Um, we got to take a quick break. We're going to come back. I'm going to ask Justin a couple quick basketball questions, big picture stuff. We already kind of broke down the game, but I want a big picture question here. Uh, that's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, our friends of the show, FanDuel, FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. I talked to Justin a lot. Justin likes money. FanDuel's a place to make money. Do it responsibly, but new customers now, $5 bet. You get $150 back in bonus bets, win or lose. Um, NBA is going on. Obviously, trade deadline just hit. Uh, Bucks picked up Patrick Beverly. I kind of like that pickup. I hate that dude. I think he's a punk, quite mm-hmm. frankly. Um, but he helps. He's, We're he's broken, tough. Ryan. It doesn't matter. <laughs> kind of a winning piece in the defense. When, like, so I like that. If you want to put some futures on the Bucks, obviously the Super Bowl come up tomorrow. Uh, actually, by the time you listen to this, that will already have happened. So n- disregard that. Uh, but lots of other sports come up, college basketball as well. So FanDuel.com slash Lockdown is a great place to do it. Every type of bet you want to do, futures, parlay, spreads, teasers, it's all there. The user interface is incredibly easy. Um, payouts are incredibly simple. FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NFL. All right, Justin. Um, you weren't on the reaction show, so I kind of talked about the game, broke down stats. Uh, I want to ask just a couple big picture questions here. And it, I think this is a good one. And by the way, kudos for missing the reaction show. That's probably for the best. Uh, is this team fixable? Like, and here's how I want to, here's how I want to frame this. I, I made the point on the show that this is a really bad four game skid. They look, they look off. It's also only four games. And I don't think this is, we're necessarily this bad. I don't like the attitude I'm seeing from this team. So unless they somehow get an adjustment where everyone starts to buy back in, we're getting to the point where finger pointing and stuff like that's going to start happening soon if this does not get corrected. And I, I kind of have been saying it the last few times. It kind of feels like they're front runners. Like when things are going really well, they they tend to lock in and go with it. When things aren't, they're kind of self-destructive. Like they do a lot of stupid things like turnovers and stuff like that that are avoidable. Uh-huh. They, they force passes that aren't there. They do – you know, they, they stop paying attention. They make lazy passes. You know, it's 
a lot of the stuff that they're doing is avoidable. And I have not seen a team recently in Wisconsin history that seems to struggle with defensive pressure more than this one. Anytime the defense really gets in their face, they really seem to struggle with it. And that's where we've seen the games. That's what happened at Nebraska. Nebraska turned up the defensive intensity a ton in the second half of that game, and we wilted. And we wilted fast. So that's kind of the book, and we've seen it most of the season. Now we've gutted out a few games where we still ended up winning against inferior teams, but it's kind of been the way that we've lost. We saw it against Providence earlier in the year. We saw it against Arizona. Like those yeah. teams were better athletically. Tennessee. But, but part of it was that was flat out the energy level that they played with and aggression they played with. They they came physically at us and we did not answer it. And I'm I'm a little leery of I don't want to make any you know bold declarations that this team is done, but they need like you took it on the chin a couple of times now. You got to stand back up and you got to fire back. Mm. And I don't know if I see them doing that. What's the, what's the biggest thing that bothers you right now? Like, I, crowd? Is it crowd? Like, I, I'm I'm kind of talking individual players. He's such that, a focal point of the offense that for him to just completely disappear, it's it's causing issues in this offense. And they want to run things through the post, and it's just not there. Like, he's unplayable right now as an offensive threat because the aggressiveness isn't there. And when he does get the ball and tries to make an aggressive move, he's forcing things. What I would probably do is I'd move him out and I'd probably play through wall in the post if I, if I was going to do it right now because I just think he's he has struggled less in that role. Mm-hmm. And I would honestly go – I would go small. Yeah, we've talked about that a couple times. I don't think – that's hard. You, so going small is probably not an option while Black Bulls hurt, though. That's part of the problem. Yeah, that, and that's fair. That I would agree with that. And it doesn't help with McGee being out, too, because now you, you have a depth piece missing. And nope. I think that injury is being undersold. I don't know anything, but I'm curious if there was a broken bone or something associated with that. With the way that he came up, how lame he was when he flew out of bounds. And the fact that we're not hearing anything about him coming back, it's either a high ankle sprain or something, a ligament or probably something broken. And this is where you're seeing, and this isn't really fair to ping the depth when you lose two guys in your top eight. Like a lot of teams Mm -hmm. are going to struggle if you lose two guys in your top eight, including your six men off the bench. But this is where like you look and you're like, gosh, in the transfer portal, if you can fill out the fringes of the roster a little bit better, right? If you can have a little bit better athleticism as, as, Coming off well, the bench so far. We saw it with the football team. It's something that guard won't do, which is if somebody you know is not going to be a valuable piece to your team, I'm sorry. You can't – like, it's not, an, it's not a participation award. Being able to play on a college basketball roster is something that only the elite guys get to do. If you're not up to snuff, you can be a walk-on. Otherwise, Sorry. Like we only have a limited number that we can give out. We have to give it to people who are productive. Mm. And there's several players who are on this roster right now who have scholarships who are not productive players. Yeah. And one of them who probably should play more in Ilver. Ilver got some burn today, but again, it feels yeah, like plus it's five on the plus minus. It they didn't like do a lot in the stat sheet, but oh, I wish he feels like a guy. If you wanted to play small, you could put Ilver at the five. And play some small ball five. I think he's he's got length. He's blocked a few shots already. Like he's the sad part is he's probably our best shot blocker. And I, I'd say that if you if you lengthen him out, I just don't think you can put him out there for twenty minutes. No, definitely not. I'm, I'm saying in burst, but he's athletic. Like over he is. whenever I talk to people on the roster, I I say who who would win a dunk contest, and everybody says store. I said who would finish second. And everyone's like Ilver. Like mm-hmm. Ilver, they're like Ilver's really more athletic than people think. Like he can get up, he can move pretty well. It's just all the little pieces that are moving a little too fast for him. But you know how you solve some of that sometimes is you give it minutes. And I agree with that. You and I have talked about that before. Like mentally, he needs to get out there. It, this is where I look at it differently. And I hate it when coaches are like, you practice like you play or whatever. I don't know what he's doing in practice. Yep, so I can't right. say a whole lot. But I, for one, was somebody who would go out and play really well in practice. And then you get me into a game and it was really hard if you weren't playing a lot of minutes to be locked in mentally and just not make mistakes because you're trying too hard. Uh I think that he has some of that into him out there where he goes out there and he makes mistakes because he's afraid that he's going to screw up and then it ends up biting him. He's he's much more athletic than Gilmore. He's he's, he's somebody who can actually actively put on the perimeter to defend somebody. Yeah. 
Well, he's he's longer than Gilmore too, so you give a little and more length. Much more explosive, and he's more of a shooter. Like I think, yeah, I mean, he's got I, a nice I, clean stroke. If he if his listen, if his awareness was up, you're talking about somebody who's probably a starter for us. Mm-hmm. Like I yeah. think that he's he's that talented of a player athletically. It's just with him, it's all mental, or at least playing consistent minutes. As yeah. like the, or something he would like be that. in the rotation and be yeah. comfortably in the rotation because athletically, he's probably in our top four players on the roster. Justin, scale of one to ten, ten being gotta have it, one being don't care, don't doesn't matter. Um, how important is the Ohio State game, home game coming up on Tuesday? Uh, if you lose that one, I start to legitimately wonder if this team's just going to crater, bottom out, and th- there's a legitimate chance if they don't get this figured out, they can end up missing the tournament. Like they could stack up some bad losses here where they end up hurting themselves a lot. So like nine, <laughs> ten. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, yeah. It could it could jump. Like we're at what four now? Yeah, we're probably not super far out from playing Purdue. I would assume. Coming up, be a loss. You got a couple. You got a couple of tricky road games still coming up, man. Ohio um, State. We struggled with their guards last time. If they carve us up again and we can't get up in that game, which offensively we're, we're regressing, this is going to be a problem for us. I mean, we there's there's a lot of teams that we could lose. We could lose to a team like Maryland. Like there's several yeah. teams on this that are are teams that I wouldn't have thought that we would lose to because I figured that we'd be locked in and be able to just kind of impose our will offensively. Our offense has not been the same the last four or five games. We've looked poor offensively. Today was the worst I think we've looked all season. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, pro- probably given the 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 stakes in the competition. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think we. I mean, poor. Rutgers is a really good defensive team, but still. Yeah. All right, he is Justin. Uh, go follow him uh, at Bucky Report JJ. Obviously, him and Rajiv do the podcast, the Bucky Report. Go check that out. Um, Justin drops a lot of recruiting tidbits too on Twitter, so go give him a follow there. Uh, Justin, as always, man, I appreciate it. Hopefully, we get a double. <laughs> we gotta beat Ohio State at home. Yeah, we we need something to go positive for this team. Yep. In general, <laughs> read on Wisconsin, and we'll talk more later.